Welcome to uh, another School of Surgery podcast. I'm here today with uh, Dr. Rajiv Singh, who's a consultant radiologist at the Royal Derby Hospital. And what we're going to talk about today is uh, the abdominal plane x-ray and uh, a structure, uh, how to describe abdominal films, and uh, also just a, a couple of abnormalities. There'll be a later podcast going into uh, more abnormalities you might commonly see, such as bowel obstruction, etc. So um, thanks for coming, uh, Rajiv. Um, would you like to tell us about the abdominal x-ray? Uh, thanks, John. Um, so let's start with um, the normal abdominal x-ray and how we normally approach an abdominal x-ray. So our objective will be to introduce you to normal abdominal x-ray, a couple of uh, normal x-rays, and then recognize some important or common abnormalities. So. Um, if you get any abdominal or chest x-rays or any um, radiology film, we normally um, notice the age, sex of the patient, and then an x-ray abdomen or chest, whether it's supine or erect film, and then f focus on the luminal and extra luminal gas pattern. So, and additional opacities such as calcification or um, artifacts. So, coming to finally soft tissues and bones and then you summarize the findings normal yeah. and abnormal okay so the and the age and the sex and supine erect are going to be written on the film somewhere aren't they or? usually they will be there will be some indication of or it will be given in your history that this is patient's mm -hmm. age this is sex supine erect will be um, written on the film mm -hmm. so okay yeah. thanks the main thing on abdominal x-ray out of these, the list of these things is luminal gas pattern, extra luminal gas, calcification and additional opacities or artifacts. So we like talking about A, B, C. Easy enough to remember. So A is for additional opacities, right. B for bowel gas pattern or extra luminal bowel gas pattern or extra luminal gas pattern. C is for calcification. So easy to remember and then we will put into practice and see a couple of films. But before we move on to films, let's look at these two pictures here. Right. We have all seen it um, time and time again, and you know as soon as you put it up that this is a thinker statue, this is Mona Lisa. Yeah. But how do we know that this is it? I've never seen, never met, but we, we all remember these things because we have been told about it, you have seen it time and time again. So it's about pattern recognition. Oh, okay. And radiology is quite a lot about pattern recognition. Um, the, in other words, the American expression is Aunt Minnie. So that means that if she looks like your Aunt Minnie, she's Aunt Minnie. Right. So um, basically, if it looks like your Aunt Minnie, then it's your Aunt Minnie. Or if it looks like certain pathology, and you've seen it time and time again, it is one of them. Sure. And that, that's the key, isn't it? It's about seeing it time and time again. So the key with, with radiology is to see a lot of radiographs that's, of various forms. And then you can spot what's normal and what's abnormal sticks out a lot more when that, you've seen a lot. That's correct. Because we will see here that I'm going to show you some normal range of abdominal x-ray. But that's not, that's not just it because there will be whole host of normals and mm. abnormals. And they can be different things. So the key is see more and more and practice. Yeah. So here we go, we've got a um, abdominal x-ray, and if you look on this, so here is the, so putting into practice A, B, C. Um, any additional opacities here? We cannot see anything additionally. So let me just move the mouse. So that's, the, um, bowel gas, B for bowel gas. So this is the peripheral bowel gas. So if you look from your anatomy, you would know it's peripheral, looks like large bowel, mm -hmm. so ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse, splenic, and then descending colon, mm. and somewhere here will That's be... very nice. I mean, you say it looks like large bowel. What, what is it about those gas appearances, apart from being peripheral, that makes it look like large yeah, bowel? Yeah, there are certain other things like, obviously, location, so it's peripheral. Yeah, yeah. Then, usually, large bowel contains gas, which is not the same thing for small bowel. Small bowel, usually, we don't see much gas. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then is the... Um, presence or absence of the markings. So in large bowel we see hostra which are incomplete widely placed yeah. uh, rings like these ones, not rings but incomplete lines. So yeah. these are hostra, so one here, one there, one there yeah. 
and here. In a small bowel, you see more, you normally don't see, but if it's dilated, yeah. you see like kids play with slingy. So that slinky, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. slinky. So, yeah. That so you get kind of, lines all the way across. You that, see that is small bowel obstruction, but that's a very nice so haustral gas pattern there. Isn't that's it? correct. Yeah. So that's the large bowel. Yeah. So we've seen bowel gas pattern, no obvious extra luminal gas here. Most of the time you'll be looking for gas patterns in the liver, i.e. biliary gas, portal gas, or um, outside if there was abscess or anything. But plain mm -hmm. film, there is only so much you can tell. Yeah. So that's, that's the normal abdominal x-ray. Mm -hmm. Moving on to next. This is another abdominal x-ray, but here if you see, if you remember the last one, not much gas in the ascending or transverse colon. In fact, if anything, it looks more mottled, and this is just fecal residue, and again, very much normal. So that's 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 where the uh, colon is, and you can see some fecal residue all the okay, way. Okay, so down. this isn't constipation, is it? This is constipation is a symptom, isn't it? Yeah. So um, and that's why we don't do abdominal X-ray for diagnosing constipation yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah. Um, and this is the rectal gas here. Yeah. So again, very much normal, and you yeah. can see. And seeing this uh, this amount of fecal loading is quite normal, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's again normal, yeah. no additional so opacities. Or looks, but the important thing, it looks a bit different from the other normal one. That's correct. Yeah, okay. And moving on to the next one. And here if you put additional opacities, so you can straight away see something in the right upper quadrant here. Oh, yeah. Looks like um, uh, some clips very nicely demonstrated. And these are pre, uh, well, cholecystectomy clip uh, from previous surgery. Mm -hmm. And also if you notice, you've got two opacities, linear opacities here. These are just artifacts from the wire in the bra. Okay. Uh, and then coming to B for bowel gas, normal bowel gas pattern. Again, this is some gas in the ascending and descending colon here. Yeah. Some little in the rectum here, but yeah. otherwise, again, very much normal pattern. Okay. Moving on to next film here. If you remember from the just um, seconds ago, we were talking about the complete rings of small bowel. Oh yeah. So now and then if you see a little bit of a small bowel distension, that's not abnormal, that's within normal limits. And here you can see compared to the hostile pattern, incomplete lines, here is complete line going through and through the bowel. Mm -hmm. And that's the volvili conventis or plica semilunaris. And that's a small bowel hallmark. Um, otherwise, the bowel gas pattern, again, this is normal pattern. It's not obstructed, not distended. And in the additional opacities or calcification, if you look at these areas, these are just calcification in the costal cartilages. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, again, it's yeah, normal. Yeah, and they're entirely normal. And they get more common as you get older? That's right, yeah. 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 Okay, so another normal one. So? So we have done the range of, well, a couple of normal abdominal x-rays. Yeah and we will now see some pathologies. So here we have got an abdominal x-ray patient uh, presented with abdominal pain and as a routine you do abdominal film, we did yeah. one. And if you look here, there are some closely packed calcific densities projected over the right upper quadrant. Yeah. And there is one small separate opacity. So this looks like that someone has packed small um, kind of um, small stones or, or, or gravel in a very close sac. Yeah. And the sac-like structure in this area got to be... Uh, is it gallbladder? Yeah. That's correct. Great. So I'm a radiologist. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't tell you more than that whether the gallbladder is abnormal because lots of people on the street walking with gallstones have yeah. got no problems. Yeah. So in itself... That, that coupled with the symptoms... Yes. So the other important thing for a radiologist is that you write the request form for as much detail about the clinical thing as possible. I know you guys get quite upset about that. That's sometimes. right. Clinical history is very important for us to interpret the findings on the yeah. imaging. Yeah. So that's that's that might be in the cystic duct or in the CBD. Yeah. And maybe this gallbladder is thickened in cl yeah. clinical setting, and you need to take it further by doing ultrasound or CT yeah. scan. Having having said that, the uh, gallstones are only opaque in about ten percent of cases. Is that correct? Uh, I think that's about, yeah, that's right, 10 to 15%. Okay, yeah. yeah. So ultrasound's a better way of looking at gallstones, but yeah, you, yeah. your point's made about the opacities. Absolutely. That's right. Um, and again, this is not abnormal in itself just to spot this, but in the correct clinical setting and, and findings, it will be significant. Yeah. And bowel gas pattern, again, looks normal. You can see very little in the large and small bowel, mm -hmm. so that's normal. Okay. Then that's just that's showing right. you the gallstone. See for calcification, yeah. Yeah, and the next picture here we have got is um, 
Another, so A, B, C, additional opacities. So if you look at these bra wires, these are artifacts, and there is mm -hmm. a laminated opacity in the right upper quadrant. This is again goldstone, cholesterol goldstone, usually solitary, yeah. laminated, big one here. They're like big marbles, aren't they? Cholesterol stones. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, so that's our calcification. I find that harder to spot. I'm glad there's a big arrow there showing as well it is. <laughs> it is difficult, but if you know what you're looking for, you can see. But again, I haven't seen that. It doesn't matter that lots of people will have it. If yeah. the patient is symptomatic, yeah. then it becomes more important. Okay. So that's just the zoomed in view to show you the calcification yeah. here. And then this is just the soft tissue, mm -hmm. looks normal. And this is additional opacity as an artifact. So, and again, this patient, if it was symptomatic, will do ultrasound to take it further. Yeah. That's the ultrasound on that patient. Okay, well, same patient? Exactly, oh, same wow. patient. So you can see nicely distended thin wall gallbladder here. Mm -hmm. That's the big calculus which we saw. Yeah. And how you know it's a stone because sound waves travel nicely through the fluid. And if there is calcification or anything, very mm -hmm. little sound waves or no sound waves go behind yeah. it. Yeah. So you get shadowing here, okay. which is called acoustic shadowing. So the, the, the probes at the top of the picture that's shining the, through the, the skin. Skin surface, that's and the And then probe. the picture's made up of things that bounce back. Some absorb, some gets uh, bounced back by yeah. the different layers of tissues and then is picked up by the receiver in the tra the transducer. Yeah. And with the help of computer, obviously, we get the images. Okay. And then so the dark shadow on the right-hand side, that's the gallbladder that's filled the with fluid bile. bile in the gallbladder. And then the sound waves bounce back off the front of the big cholesterol stone. Yeah. And they don't go through the cholesterol stone, so that's where you get the shadow behind shadow. it. And right. if you look at this fluid, it enhances the flow of sound waves through it, so mm -hmm. you get brightness behind it. Oh, right. And that's called acoustic enhancement, so shadowing and enhancement. Yeah. And yeah. that's how you different cystic and solid structures or calcific densities. Very, very interesting. So gallbladder, and that's the calculus. Stone. Oh, stone. Very good. There is... Uh, this uh, picture again, abdominal x-ray. So if you look here, uh, bowel gas pattern again, very much normal. Um, and this is a bowel gas shadow here and well-defined opacity. Most of the time, if you spot any well-defined opacity, think about man-made stuff. Right, that's so, pretty circular then, yeah? Very nice, yeah. yeah. So that's a tablet in the stomach. Right. And that's the stomach um, shadow, gas shadow. Oh, yeah. So A and B, bowel gas and additional opacity. Okay. Right. OK, well, thank you for that. Um, so you've given us a structure for how to look at things and show some some views of normal. Could you just summarise what everyone needs to take home about ab normal abdominal x-rays? Yeah, abdominal x-rays or any x-rays, first of all, we have to look at um, lots of normals to familiarise what is normal, what is the spectrum of normal. And uh, then I just gave you that A, B, C, because people like doing A, B, C. So if you can't remember anything, then try to fit things in A, yeah. B, C. And that's just one way of looking at one it. Way it? Of it's an easy it. way to remember. You have your own way, or people have their own way. But yeah. that's just to help if you can't okay. remember anything. Then And A, a stands for? Uh, so A is for additional opacities. B? Bowel gas pattern or extra luminal gas pattern. Yeah. And C is for calcification. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Singh. My pleasure. That's uh, very clear. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers.